Well, welcome. Glad that you're uh, looking at the video. Uh, I just made a comment on someone's posting, and it was somewhat sad. I have to admit, there's there's a lot of hurting people. And you don't have to look far to see someone have something happen to them that's worse than what you will ever experience. Um, this man had a lot of things that was happening in his family's life. I found myself commenting on some of the things that he was going through. And, you know, words in itself don't hold a candle to what things that they're going through. Um, we always hear the word said, you know, I know how you feel. Uh, no, you don't. Not always. Um, a person that loses a loved one, um, I've never lost a, a wife to death. I would not know how to even, I wouldn't even know how to think. I lost my dad. I can relate to how that felt. Believe it or not, I was at peace when he took his last breath. I watched him die. I was there looking at his face. And I watched him slip away. I didn't see him struggle. He simply took his last breath and he was gone. See, we can think that we understand what somebody's going through. But we really don't know what other people are going through. Uh, I can only imagine uh, having to live in the environment that that man lived in with his situation. And there's always someone that has it worse. All you got to do is look around. I remember many people in my nursing home ministry before the virus come, I couldn't remember the lady's name, but I still vaguely remember her laying on that bed and wasn't even able to move her arms to grab the straw to get a little drink of water. I remember that lady had to have the straw right at her mouth where she could literally open up her mouth and her lip to be able to get a little drink of water. Her body would not work. I don't know if that lady's still living or not. I went into her room a many a time and took the little voice recorder to let her hear the message. She could hear and she could talk to me. But it was my only way of ministering to her. I could not imagine 
my life being lived like that. I let her know many times of how much of an inspiration she was to me. I remember an elderly lady that had polio. And this lady here, I'd never heard anything out of her mouth that would give you the indication that she was mad with anybody. And I would go in and visit. She never went to the service. She couldn't. I remember looking at the bottom of her hands and the hands on the bottom had scabs all over the bottom of the hands on the fingers. It had scabs. I remember visiting that lady. And I always questioned why. Lord, why don't you just take her on out of here? I couldn't imagine living in that kind of lifestyle. But I remember the encouragement that I got when I went into that lady's room. The encouragement that she gave to me. You think that you are the one giving encouragement to her, but I found her encouragement to me was just mind-blowing. Uh, there's a young man that I'm probably older than him about five years. He's in the nursing home. And he's laying in the bed right tonight. And he has the ability to take the tablet and turn on this particular video. And he'll know who I'm talking about. His nickname is Sergeant. So he knows that I'm talking about him if he clicks on the video. He is such an inspiration to see someone that has been through what he has been through. I don't get to see him now because of the rules of the virus. I don't get to go and visit him, but we do talk on occasion. And I'm reminded of that man's life, and I shake my head. Now, I'm just telling you about these few people that I can't even imagine what it would be like being in their kind of environment. There was a verse that I read that I typed out, and I don't know that I actually said it exactly like the Bible says, but I'm in... Uh, First Corinthians chapter 2 and I'm looking at verse number 9 First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse number 9 now Paul is writing this Paul is saying this and he starts out in verse 9 but as it is written anytime that you in the scripture see a uh, area that says, as it is written, it is always referring to the Old Testament. It's referring back to the book of Isaiah. I'm looking at the verse right here, and I haven't turned over there, but it's referencing Isaiah 64, 4. Now, I'm not going to look that up because that's not my message, my message is right here in verse 9, but Paul says, but as it is written. Now, this is the verse that I quoted to the man that I typed out. It says, I hath not seen, 
talking about the eye that I have. The eye, the feeble eyes that I have. I have shots in my eyes. My mother has shots in her eyes. But it says, I have not seen nor ear heard. Now he's getting somewhere with this. I want you to think about what I'm saying today. I hath not seen. Ear hath not heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. I can't look into heaven today. Do I believe there's a heaven? I absolutely do believe there's a heaven. I do believe there is a heaven. I believe that God took time to make a place that would literally blow our living mind. And I believe that. I believe that the few of these people that I just talked about, for the ones that has went on to their reward, I just pray that they had the nucleus of salvation. I pray that salvation was given to them because it was free. It's a free gift. The Bible says here, I have not seen. I haven't seen heaven yet. I can imagine what heaven is like, but my eye hath not seen heaven, nor ear heard. I've not heard heaven. Not down here in this life. I've not heard what things is going on in heaven right now. Neither have entered into the heart of man. Meaning that I can have all the dwelling of heaven. Then I can literally stand. And still not come anywhere close. Because the Bible says it hadn't entered into the heart of man. Meaning that no matter how, that take that sergeant. There is no way he can lay there in that bed and say that, you know, I seen heaven. Because the Bible says here, neither have entered into the heart of man. Meaning that he can't even phantom the place that is called heaven. Even though he has every single day to look at the TV and look straight ahead and look at the roof of his room, he cannot phantom the place that is called heaven because the Bible says, neither have entered into the heart of man the things... I always used to quote the good things, but that wasn't correct. The Bible says the things which God has prepared for them that love him, eyes have not seen nor ears heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Now, you know, I just thought about this. Could some of them things be in our life today? Is God wanting to reveal some of them things today in this life today? I believe that it very well could. I believe he's talking about heaven right here. But listen to what verse number 10 says. See, a lot of people uses the verse that I just quoted, but they don't use number 10 to go with it. It makes number 10 or, or verse 9, it makes it look like that it is impossible to be able to know about the place that is called heaven. But that's not what verse number 10 says. Verse 10 says, but God hath revealed them. Unto us by his spirit. 
And I'm going to stop right there just a minute. God hath revealed them unto us. Who's the us that he's referring to? He's referring to the saved child of God. God can't reveal to the lost man what they're going to face. Can he go and he reveal things about this place that is called heaven? Can he reveal? It says, but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. Now, my spirit man today don't see heaven. My spirit man, the spirit man that I possess, don't hear heaven. My spirit man cannot comprehend yet. Now, maybe as time goes on in my life, that the Lord will allow me to be revealed that it says right here, but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit, capital S, meaning that the spirit of God can reveal heaven while we're here in this life. But it says, for the spirit searcheth all things. God knows how much I want to see heaven. God saw that man write that Facebook posting tonight, reaching out for help. He saw the mentality of the words that I wrote to the man. One of the things that I do remember saying to him was, make sure salvation is a hundred percent nailed down. Make sure salvation is a hundred percent nailed down. That was one of the piece of advice that I told him. I also told him about this verse right here, but as it is written, I have not seen. I didn't read him verse number 10. But God hath revealed them unto us by the Spirit. He can reveal. God can reveal. If God wants me to know about the place called heaven, he can reveal that to me if I really want to know. If I'm willing to just sort of make light of it and, oh, it ain't, it's not a big deal until I get there. No, I, I, I think that I have had interest to know about the place that is called heaven. I mean, this is Paul's writing, and Paul wrote over in 1 Corinthians 15 about, Behold, I show you a mystery. Yeah, there's a mystery, all right. He says, But God hath revealed them unto us, meaning the saved now. He revealed it unto us, by his spirit, meaning our spirit man, my friend the sergeant, should be able with his spirit man to reveal what that place is heaven is all about. Does that mean that he's going to fully know before he leaves this world? He may and he may not, but according to this, God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things. Listen now, yea or yes, the deep things of God. That's where I think that we mess up. We don't really seek the deep things of God. We just sort of, oh well. I think the Lord wants us to seek the deep things of God. You go and let me dive into water, and that water is sort of blackish, and that water, you can't see the bottom, and you ask me to dive off of a diving board that can't see the bottom, I'm taking somebody else's word on it that I'm going to dive into that water and I, my hands is not going to hit the bottom 
of that of that pond or that dirt on the bottom. But what happens if I just don't care about the deep things? What's going to happen? The deep things is going to be revealed that it wasn't as deep as I thought it was. I happen to know several people that went swimming that dove off into water and was never the same after that. I can't remember some of their names, but I vaguely remember where there would be people that would dive out of a cypress tree and jump and dive and they would hit their head on the bottom and that would have been it. It didn't kill them. They was miserably affected by the fall that they was never the same, that they couldn't even take care of themselves. They had no ability to feel of their legs or feel of their back or feel of their stomach or nothing. See, the Bible verse says here, Yea, the deep things of God. Does God want me to know the deep things about him? Sure he does. Because it does say here, eyes have not heard, or I, or let's read it. I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. See, you know what I used to the man that I wrote tonight? How many people out there remember Miss Fanny Crosby? Miss Fanny, I think, wrote a many a hymn song. I think she wrote Blessed Assurance. Oh, there's so many. I wish that I could write them down for you to tell you about all the songs that the lady wrote down. Her couldn't even see anything. The doctor had put the wrong drops in her eyes and she was where she could not see anything. And you know what? I believe today she's in the presence of the Lord. Now her body is laying down here on earth somewhere but her spirit, in her spirit, is with God the Father. And she's praising the Lord God to die. So, yes, can we praise the Lord God? Sure. But she praised the Lord God while she was down here in this life when she couldn't see. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. Talking about the saved. He revealed it to the saved person. He can, it says, but God hath revealed. Past tense. It also means future tense. That God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. A lot of times we just say, oh, well, and not really dig for the deep things of God. But it says right here, for the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. God knows how much depth I have to want to know more about him. He knows who it is that wants to know more about him. He knows who it is that values their salvation. And tonight, if you don't value your salvation, then maybe you might need to take a second look. You might need to take a closer look. Elderly ministry is how you get a hold of me here. Um, you can also go to YouTube. This is the YouTube channel right here. Go to YouTube, dial in the YouTube. There's a phone number. The phone number I have on my website is is visible. 
You can pull it down. You can call me. You can leave a message. I ask you to leave a message, and I will return that call. I promise you I will do that if all possible. I thank you all for listening. Maybe searching out the deep things of God might be important. God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. That is, if you're saved, if you're born again. I thank y'all for listening. If I can, like I say it again, if I can do anything, by all means, leave me the number and I'll call you back. Okay. Thank y'all for listening tonight.